Hello, this is Miss McCauley, and this is Dividing by Decimals Part 1. Wow, I can't believe you guys are already to almost the end of your decimal unit. Um, the last thing that we have to do is figure out how to divide decimals by decimals. We've already done decimals um, divided by whole numbers, which is pretty easy. You just raise the decimal to the roof and divide like normal. Now we have to divide a decimal by a decimal. And you're probably thinking, why would I ever do this? Or when does this happen? Well, so let me tell you a little story about um, my little dog, Spike. Isn't he cute? He is so cute that I have made a lot of movies about him. Look at him. Isn't he so cute? He looks really cute. I had to make some movies about him. So I made some movies and I put them onto a disc, okay, because I wanted to share them with people. Each of my amazing movies that I made takes up 26.5 megabytes of space on the DVD that I have, okay? How many of these movies can I put on my DVD if it only has 848 megabytes of free space? All right, that's the question that we need to answer, is we need to figure out if I took a whole bunch of movies of my dog and each one takes up 26.5 megabytes, how many of those movies can I fit on a DVD that has 848 megabytes of space? So my division problem would look like this if I was gonna, um, do the division, which I will later, but I'm just going to write it out for you. It would be 848 divided by 26.5. Okay? It's one whole DVD divided into groups of 26.5. Okay? So I want you to remember this problem. We're going to come back to it. It's kind of a difficult problem, so we're going to do some easier examples first. Okay, so go ahead and go to your next page. Okay, so what do you do if the divisor isn't a whole number? Now remember what our divisor is. Divisor is the number that does the dividing or how many groups that we want. The number that does the dividing or how many groups we want. It's also The divisor is also the number outside the house. Okay, I'm going to write that down too. Okay, outside the house. So you can remember which one the divisor is. Okay, so let's just do a couple of simple problems. Okay, so for example, what if I just did a simple problem like this? Um, 8.4 divided by 0.2. Okay, so what I'm asking here is think about money, for example. What if I had $8.40? Let's write it like money. And I wanted to know how many groups of 0.2 can I get out of $8.40? 0.2 is the same thing as 20 cents. I want to know how many groups I can get out of that $8.40. So, I cannot divide $8.40 by 0.2 without first getting rid of that decimal in the divisor. I'm not allowed to have it there. So I have to get rid of it. In order to get rid of it, I need to move it out of my way, okay? So I need to move it out. I'm gonna move it until it goes to the end, okay? So I'm moving it, but if I do it to the divisor, I have to do the same thing to the dividend. So I have to take this decimal and move it one space as well, okay? So my new problem now looks like this, eight, 4.0 divided by 2. Okay, all I've done is move my decimal, but I had to do it to both the dividend and the divisor. Now I can just divide like normal, like you guys did in the last lesson. We raise the decimal to the roof. Okay, that's easy enough. And then we divide like normal. 2 goes into 8 four times. 4 times 2 is 8. We subtract, we have zero. 
we have 0, bring down the 4, 2 goes into 4 2 times, 2 times 2 is 4, subtract, bring down our 0, 2 goes into 0, 0 times, we have 0 left over. So our answer is we can get 42 groups of 20 cents out of $8.40. Okay, pretty easy stuff, right? Let's try another pretty simple one. Okay, with a little bit bigger divisor. Okay, so what if I have this time, let's do, um, what if I have uh, $10? And I want to know how many groups of um, nickels I can get out of that. So let's say I do $10 divided by 0.05. Okay, I've got a decimal in my divisor, so I have to move that out. I have to move it two places to get it out of there. If I move it two places in the, divi in the divisor, I have to move it two places in the dividend and so it goes right here now. We raise it to the roof so it's way over here now and then we divide like normal. Okay so five goes into let's see five cannot go into one so we move right over to the ten. Five goes into ten two times. Remember to always line up when you're doing division so that it's your answer stays on top of the number that you're dividing into. Two times five is ten subtract we get zero bring down your zero we can't forget about these zeros because our decimal is way over here five goes into zero zero times we multiply we get zero still a lot of zeros and we really don't have to keep doing all this dividing but we do have to fill in the zeros on top if there are holes on the roof you have to fill them in with zeros Okay, so make sure you patch up all your holes. I'm going to put a little note up here at the top. Let's put a little star on it or something so that we know. Okay, so let's put a star here and let's say, don't forget to patch the holes on the roof. Don't forget to fill all holes on the roof. All right, let's do a few more examples. Go ahead and go to your next page. Okay, so we've got several examples here. I have my little um, circle over here again. This circle is what where I'm gonna write in the number of decimal places that I have to move. So we're gonna use that. So if we look over here, we see that we have one digit behind the decimal place. So that means that I need to move the decimal one place. So let's just write it like that. Okay, let's go ahead and do the next problem. In this problem, the problem is 21.3 divided by 0.3. What that's saying is how many groups of 0.3 are there in 21.3? Or if you were thinking of money, how many groups of 30 cents are there in $21.30? So let's rewrite the problem. Let me go ahead and zoom in a little bit. Make this a little bit bigger so we've got some more room. And let's write the problem. 21.3 divided by 0.3. I'm going to switch colors here so it's a little bit easier. Now the first thing that you need to do, and let me go ahead and make this pen just a little bit wider too. The first thing you want to do is bump the decimal. Okay, so this one needs to bump one place to make it a whole number. Whatever you do to the divisor, you need to do to the dividend. Move it over one place, and then while you're moving it over, just bring it straight up and place it on the roof. I'm going to make it kind of big so it's obvious. And then divide like normal. Three cannot go into two, so I'm going to put a zero here. Three can go into 21 seven times. Seven times three is 21. Subtract, you get zero. Remember to bring down the three. Every single time you bring down, so every time you have an arrow, you must repeat and divide again. Three goes into three one time. One times three is three. Subtract zero left over. That's very easy. Our final answer is 71. So there are 71 groups of, three, of 30 cents in $21.30.
that seems reasonable and makes sense. So always remember to divide the, just like you've been taught and to bump the decimals. Let's go ahead and do another example. Okay, let me just move this, make sure you have that okay. And let me move this and we'll do 864 divided by 0.6. So let's write the problem down over here. 864 divided by 0.6. Again, the first thing you need to do is bump the decimal over one place. Now, in this situation, you have $864 divided by 0.6. So we're asking how many groups of 60 cents can we get in $864? There is no decimal that we can see in 864, but hopefully you remember that if you do not see a decimal, it is at the end. We still need to bump it because we bumped it over here in the divide or in the dividend in the divisor, sorry. So we need to bump it one time over here by adding a zero. When you bump it, go straight up to the roof and place it on top. Okay, always do the bumps and then raise it at the same time. Then let's divide. Six goes into eight one time. One times six is six. Subtract two left over. Bring down the six. Six goes into 26 four times. Four times six is 24. Subtract two left over. Bring down the four. Six goes into 24 four times. Four times six is 24. Subtract zero left over. Bring down the zero. Six goes into zero zero times. Yes, you must go ahead and divide even when there's a zero down here because if you don't, you would end up, you have to go ahead and, even when there's zero, if you've brought down, you need to divide again. Otherwise, you would be left with a hole in the roof, and we do not want to have a hole in the roof. There should be filled in with zeros. You can multiply again one last time, and then you have zero left over. So our final answer is 1,440. Okay, that makes sense that there are 1,440 groups of 60 cents in 864. This is the end of Dividing Decimals by Decimals Part 1. Please answer the question to the right. Please do not use a calculator and show your work to your teacher when you've finished. Bye for now.